Hi guys, Jordan from PMP Campers. I'm just going to be doing a handover video on this Auto Sleeper Burford. Uh, so it's on the 2016 Mercedes Sprinter chassis. So, uh, in my opinion, this is kind of the the top of the range, you know, highest kind of spec vehicle you can get from Auto Sleeper at the moment. Um, you know, it's an eight meter long vehicle, separate bedroom, separate bathroom, uh, and so I think you're going to like this one. So what I'll do is I'll run you through under the bonnet. Um, and then I'll go around the outside of the vehicle and then eventually once I've done all that I'll jump inside and show you what we've got going on in there as well So as I say based on the Mercedes chassis uh, the Mercedes ones have always been well known for being really nice and big and rugged um, Ridiculously quiet to run. I mean this one's got 6,000 miles on the clock as well. So um, When it's running you wouldn't even know it was running until you started driving it uh, so quiet, so smooth on the automatic gearbox there as well. So under the bonnet here on the left hand side, we've got your brake fluid attached to the servo just down the back. ABS pump is next door to that as well. Um, engine coolant in this reservoir just here. Just behind that down here, this is all of your turbo gubbins. Uh, so do your best not to touch any of that um, because it will get ridiculously hot so um you know please try your best not to go anywhere near that area down there especially once it's been run um air filter sits inside this box just up here and i will just say that this little red thing just here if you push on that you can see there it comes up a little uh metal piece is revealed when you do that basically what that is because the engine battery sits in the cab it doesn't sit under the bonnet if you wanted to jump start the vehicle, you've got a positive terminal just there uh, and you have to find yourself a negative somewhere. So uh, a negative terminal will be an engine hoist or something like that. But uh, anyway, you, you'll be able to find a negative point somewhere under the bonnet, um, wherever that might be. There will be plenty of places for it. Um, but there you go. So that's your positive terminal there for the engine battery if you want to jump start the vehicle. You've then got your... Um, engine oil filling point just here and your engine oil dipstick is the yellow topped one just down here uh, I believe if I'm not mistaken that we have also got this here which is your automatic transmission fluid uh, sort of you know level indicator um, you need to do that whilst it's running uh, but you know that's that's more of a sort of servicing thing to worry about um, Cabin filter sits in here and we've got your washer fluid reservoir over here as well. If you do need an earthing point, I've just seen there you've got a couple of earths over here on the right. So earthing point that would be there, positive over there. Uh, so on the front near side, if I just open up this passenger door, we've got your bonnet release handle just inside there. A load of fuses and relays underneath this little cover here as well. Customer has opted for a twin leisure battery setup, so you probably won't be able to see very much, uh, but you can just about see twin batteries down there. These are your leisure batteries. Uh, I've done it properly so that it's got the um, breather valves of both batteries going down to the outlet underneath and a decent thickness of cable running across between the batteries. You've also got a new, slightly bigger than the original one, solar panel up on the roof as well, which has been wired in down to the power supply unit. So it does still show you up on the control panel how many you know, volts and amps and things, which I'll run you through in a minute as well. So inside this little cover, so just there, open up this cover and it gives you access to the diesel filling point, like so. And then we've got a little bit of access down here, need two fingers to open that up tiny bit of access there to the battery but that's not really much use now to be honest now that there's two batteries in there you don't really get a huge amount of space right so on the Burford you do get these lower lockers so this is a wet locker just basically for wet storage you know boots and dirty things basically you don't want to get the inside of the van uh, dirty with the whole vehicle all the way around is in absolutely lovely condition. I cannot fault it whatsoever. The paintwork is absolutely fantastic all the way around. Even the wheels, if you look there, condition of those wheels, perfect. So 
We've got, if I carry on around the outside now, we've got the electronic step, which comes out with a button just here. So just press it the once, step comes in and out like so. Uh, you will also notice that when you start the engine up, if the, if the uh, step is out, the engine should, or having the engine switched on should bring the step in uh, so that you can't drive off with the step out basically. So that's a, a nice thing to have. We've got these two vents just here. These are both to do with the fridge. So if you've got the fridge lit up on gas, you'll probably be able to hear a sort of burner noise just down here. Um, but that is the access to the back of the fridge just there. Sorry about the noise, got the jet wash going over there. We've then got the boiler vent just here. So if you wanted to check that the boiler was working, you can put your hand just there and you will feel hot air coming out through that. We've got your external gas point just here. So that's your barbecue point. Also got the optional external 240 volt socket. So that'll be live when your hookup is plugged in. We've got a massive storage locker back here underneath the fixed bed. Uh, so you can get to this from inside the van as well, which I will show you when we go inside. But we've got all of the original carpets just there as well. So at the back of the van, we've got your tow bar, two bike bike rack and reversing camera up there as well. And then we'll sort of carry on round to the offside. So, Right at the back just here, so from about here and back is the bathroom. So we've got the toilet just here, sink in the middle, and then a massive separate shower towards the back. So first locker we get to is your toilet cassette locker. So you have got a separate flush fluid re reservoir. So if you wanted to fill up your flush fluid, you fill it up from in there. And that is your pre-mixed pink fluid that goes inside that. And underneath that, we've obviously got your toilet cassette itself. So to release the toilet cassette from its place, all you have to do is lift up the little sort of greeny yellow handle there and pull the entire thing towards you. Once you've got it to here, you'll be able to take the entire thing out. And all you need to know from there really is that you drain it out from here. And then whilst you're draining it out, hold down this little button here. And what that does is basically a pressure release valve and it will allow all of that you know whatever's inside there to drain out nice and easily and that is it so down underneath here on the rear off side we've got your external uh, wastewater drain off point you can see that's open at the moment which is why it's draining out nice and slowly a little bit further up we've got your fresh water drain off point the blue one so that works in exactly the same way as the waste, it's just that it's a fresh water drain off, drain off point instead. So again, about the bodywork, you can probably see there, really, really nice and straight. Even these stickers are like brand new, as you can see. So we've got two options. When it comes to filling up the fresh water tank, we've got two options. Um, so you can either use one of these whale fittings which basically just plug onto there and then you would drop the pump down into a external rollaway tank or whatever you've got available so if you don't have access to a hose point basically this is what you would need to use if you do have access to a hose so more likely if you're at home and you want to fill up before you leave uh, if i just grab the key out of my pocket you do also have the option of filling it up from this little filler point here. So if I just grab the key out, so it's a little bit awkward with one hand. Um, so the key that you need to use for that is this one just here. So that basically just goes into here, twist it whichever way it'll go, and then remove it like that. So if you had access to a hose, you can fill it up really nice and easily from there. If you don't, and you're, you know, you're away camping, you can use the external filling point from there. You've then also got the electric hookup, which is, sorry, I'm just putting the key away. Electric hookup is from in this little cover here. So having the electric hookup plugged in means that you'll be able to use any of your 240 volt appliances. Uh, it also means the battery charger will spring to life straight away. So, you know, it means you can have, 
you don't have to worry about any leisure battery voltage or anything like that. Although obviously now you have got a nice big solar panel up on the roof, so you shouldn't have to worry about that anyway. And we've got the refillable gas point just here. So this is your gasset refillable point. So push in and round to the left to allow that to come out. And at the moment that is suited to the British uh, filling hose. So if you were to go abroad, you would need to get an adapter for whatever country you're going to, because uh, they're pretty much all different. So they just basically screw onto there and then that works wherever, you know, whatever country you're going to. So down underneath, because you've got the refillable tank, you see there, it has been looked after as well because it's been undercoated like that. So these do tend to go a little bit rusty if they're not treated like this, but this one's been treated really, really well. So uh, no rust on that whatsoever. So basically what you've got is you've got this little cover here, which reveals when you take it off, just with this one little screw here, it will reveal a little turning valve. And that is how you can isolate this gas from the inside of the van. So if you took this cover off and see the valve, turn it anti, uh, sorry, turn it clockwise all the way around to the right, will turn the gas bottle off and anti-clockwise all the way around to the left will turn the bottle on. So if you wanted to isolate it from there, you can do that. You don't have to do that uh, because there is a little valve inside, there's a little gauge inside telling you how much is in it. So you don't really have to turn it off every single time you drive if you don't want to. It's a little bit of a pain, obviously, to get down here and do it every single time, but you can do that. You know, if, if I was you, if I was gonna leave the van for a, a little while in storage or something, I might, you know, turn the turn the valve off there, uh, just for you know good practice, really. But um, but there you go. So that is the gas bottle itself, just down there, underneath the rear, uh, the sort of off side of the van, towards the front. So the little gauge I was talking about is this here. Now that will come on with your ignition, so it will tell you how much gas is in there. Again, if I just do that quickly. So I pop the ignition on. And it should come up telling us how much gas we have got. He says. It might actually be on, but it's just really dim because it's quite bright outside. Um, let's try that again. I know that it works because I had it on up at the show where we sold it. <laughs> so I could show them how much gas was in it. I will double check that. It may well be that we just can't see it because it's so bright outside, but uh, I will double check that that's definitely working. But uh, there you go. That's the gauge there to tell you how much gas is in the tank, basically. There is another gauge, just so that you're aware, there is another gauge on the front of that tank behind that cover. Um, there you go. So what I'm gonna do is show you around the cab so the cab itself in this particular case is once again a very very high spec um to be honest i've sort of come to expect it on these burfords we've only had two of these burfords in at pmp um the last burford we had was a couple of years ago but i, I kid you not this is the sort of vehicle that i would go for out of any other um it really really is Auto Sleeper have been making these vans like this for a long time and they're just, you know, a step further, uh, I would say, than a lot of companies in the way that they build things. Uh, same goes for the auto, the uh, Mercedes chassis. As I say, they're, they're really nice and rugged, really reliable. And with just over 6,000 miles on the clock, you would sort of come to expect it anyway. But uh, there you go. So um, based on the automatic gearbox, so... The auto is ridiculously easy on the uh, on the Mercedes. So you just go down once for reverse, down two for neutral, and all the way down for drive. Uh, and that really is all you need to do. You've got the cruise control on here as well, which is another nice optional extra. So you can push in and turn this around, adjust it however you want to use that. Uh, that's your cruise control and limiter, speed limiter. You will also notice that on the Mercedes, you don't have a right-hand stalk. You've only got the left hand one so you've got your indicators like normal and your flash like that but you've also got your wipers on here as well all right so it's all from the same one stalk you've then also got the uh radio and media 
double din side head head unit head unit sorry head unit there uh, so that is your radio all in there uh, looks like you can connect a phone up to it as well so you've got the phone uh, answer and decline buttons just there so you can connect up a phone to that you've obviously got your air conditioning and your sort of options for recirculate and all that kind of thing there as well temperature settings and all that um, now I will have to double check this because we have had one Mercedes in with this option before. Now I think that that switch just there is an optional heater. So it's like a, a heater for in the winter. So it will get, it's like a 12 volt heater, I believe. So it will warm the van up before the engine's warm. I will have to double check that uh, because there's a few different options that they have on these Mercedes or the older ones tend to have them more often. Um, but I'll double check that. And we've got the light here as well. All right, so a couple of nice optional extras there on the Mercedes side of things. Nice big uh, sun visors there, and obviously you've got your internal light here as well. Reversing camera is from this screen that is nice and eye level, so you don't have to look down or anything like that to see the screen. It's just there, nice eye level uh, reversing camera. Comes on when you pop it into reverse. Other than that, uh, I think that's about it really for the cab. Uh, you've got a... Uh, Fire extinguisher is just down here, so if you ever needed that, that's where it is. And there we go. So, so before I get on and show you the actual control panel and all that sort of stuff, how the van works, uh, I'm just going to show you down here to the underneath of this offside settee. So, we've got this down here, which is your sergeant power supply unit. All right, so essentially what this does is it tells the van where so this is your electronic uh sort of the heart of the vehicle really so all of the electric from the engine battery and the leisure batteries and the solar panel and pretty much everything really comes to here and then gets diverted to wherever it needs to go to around the van so if you have any problems with anything electrical this would be the first place that i'd be looking so let's just say for example uh we come into the van one day and we can't get the water to, water pump to work We'd come in here, have a little look at our 12 volt fuses, and then just have a little look through and see if we can find out which one it is. Now, I believe there is a sticker somewhere, or at least in the paperwork, there will be a, 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 a guide telling you what number fuse does what. And you can have a little look through there and just see what's what. So that's where I would look first for any sort of electrical problems. To the right of that, you've also got your 240 volt trip switches. So if your electric hookup was plugged in, you can check that these are all in the upright position and that'll tell you that it's all on. You've then got your isolators up here as well for your 240 volt appliances. So if you wanted to isolate the gas from the 240 volt charger, press that one there, space heater and water heater. So you can isolate the, the, the mains from there. Now, generally speaking, you haven't got to do anything with this down here at all. If everything's working and everything's fine, you don't have to open this cupboard up. All right, so you would only ever open this up if you had a problem with something specifically. All right, so. Uh, let's see if there's anything obvious that I need to run through as well there. No. Nope. So what I'll do then is I'll run you through the control panel and how that all works. Um, then what I'll do is I'll go through all the appliances uh, and, and show you how they work specifically as well. Um, but yeah, first off, before I do that, I'll just quickly run you through the layout. So. We've got the two front swivel seats here. So these do swivel round completely. Two nice big settees here as well. So these pull together in the middle to make a really nice big double bed here in the front. So you can have a super comfortable double bed here in the front and you double bed in the back there as well. So if you did want two separate uh, sleeping areas, you can do that with no problems at all. Now the biggest selling point I would say with the Burford is that you get the separate bedroom and separate bathroom. Now, obviously you've got lots of other nice things like having a massive kitchen worktop area, um, various things like that. But if I take you through to here, you've got the French bed here. So really massive, great big window here and skylight above head as well. So you've got loads of natural light coming in from there. Um, but this is your main bedroom area. Now you've got in the wardrobe here, huge 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 wardrobe 
Um, you've got your TV aerial booster just there, just in case you needed to see that one. Uh, some wiring running across through these bits up at the top there, but you don't need to know that really. Um, but yeah, so you've got a massive wardrobe in there. These lights turn on and off as you open and close these doors as well. And as I said, you've got the access to lifting up this bed if you want to. Now, I've got a couple of cushions in the way at the moment, but essentially, uh, if you needed to get access to the boiler, you can do that just from here. Uh, there will be a drain for the boiler as well, which is just over there. The thing there with the blue top, you probably can't really see it, but uh, if you ever needed to turn uh, to, to close off that boiler drain, so if it opens up by itself, which it will do when it gets really cold outside, uh, all you need to do is twist it back to where it is right now and push the little blue button back in, which is on the left-hand side of it. So um, essentially, if you wanted to stop the water from draining out from the boiler, turn the valve back to where it is now on the top and push the little blue button back in. Separate bathroom at the back as well. All right, so you've got the completely separate bathroom at the back of the van. Huge, great big shower at the back there. Huge, huge shower. Normally, in the majority of motorhomes, you will have to kind of squeeze into a shower a little bit, but there is, it, it's, there's plenty of room in there. Um, separate sink there, and obviously your toilet there as well. Now, the toilet is very, very easy to use. I'm just going to run you through that briefly. So the toilet itself, you've got a button at the top just here, which basically, when you press it, if you watch, pumps around the flush fluid and when you want to drain this out into the cassette itself you've got a, a, a grey handle here pull that towards you and everything from in that bowl there will drain out onto the floor push the flat back and that's it easy peasy so I'll stop going on about the uh, the layout now and show you how we use stuff. So above the door itself, as soon as you walk in, you'll notice you've got the control panel up here. So this is your main control panel. This is sort of the, you know, the brain of the vehicle. This is what tells the vehicle what to do. Uh, so you've got a main power switch just here. Once you've turned that on, you will then have access to the entire system. So we can flick through here. If I press up on this, we can flick through and we can see various things. So we've got the clock, alarm time, all that sort of stuff. You can go through there and, and fiddle with that if you want to. You don't have to. We've then got, these are more important. So we've got your leisure battery voltage. So we've got leisure battery voltage there, 12.7, the capacity 100%, how many amps of solar power are going into the battery at any one time, and how many amps are being drawn from the leisure battery. So if I turned all the lights on in the vehicle, uh, if I go and do that, if I turn all the lights on, all the, although, you know, they are all LEDs, so it's not going to be drawing a huge amount of power anyway. But if I just go ahead and do this, get loads of power going, we'll probably find that now, when we go to here, it's now telling us minus three amps of power. So that's how many amps of power are being drawn from the ledger battery at any one time. Okay. So that's probably a little bit of an extreme example because you're not going to go ahead and just start going crazy and turning everything on all at once. Uh, but, you know, if, if it's nighttime, you could have lots of lights on and all that sort of stuff. So just bear that in mind. That is what tells you how many amps are being drawn from the battery. Other than that, we go one more across and it shows us the uh, system levels. So we've got the vehicle battery voltage, 13.2, leisure battery voltage, 12.6, uh, the freshwater tank level and the wastewater tank level. Okay, now I will say that you've got what's called a smart uh, solar regulator. So inside that box just down there, you've got the solar regulator. So what happens is the solar panel gets its solar power from the sun, obviously, as everybody knows, and then the, the cables run across here down into this box. And what the smart regulator does is it determines by itself which battery to charge up so it's either the engine battery or the leisure so if for example uh the smart relay realizes the solar the leisure battery is getting a bit low it should start pumping the power from the solar panel into the leisure battery vice versa um so 
it should do that automatically for you. You haven't got to do anything with anything. There's no buttons to press or anything to switch between leisure and vehicle. That smart regulator should choose which one it wants to, ch to charge up by itself. Um, so, yeah, that's how that works, basically. Um, so that's the control panel. That's how you go through and see all your levels and things like that. Next door to that, we've got your water pump switch just here, which generally speaking, you only really use when you want to use it. And we've got your lights. Okay. We then got your awning light. So this is your awning light switch just here. Uh, this one just here is another light switch, I believe, um, for entry light normally, but uh, sometimes they don't have the, the actual light there fitted, but um, there you go. The next one over is your battery selector. So if I press on this button here and we look what happens, it comes up saying at active battery data, vehicle selected. So that means that now anything that I turn on in the back of the vehicle, whether it's lights or if it's the fridge or whatever it is, whatever needs 12 volt power is now being drawn from the engine battery. Now that's kind of pointless in a way because uh, although we've got the, the solar panel up on the roof, so it's charging it up, uh, there's not really any reason that you would ever want to draw the power from the vehicle battery. If you were hooked up on the mains and you wanted to put mains charging power into the engine battery, then you can do that. You can select the, the, the vehicle battery voltage, just like we've done there, and it will start charging the vehicle battery rather than the leisure battery from the electric hookup. So that's pretty much the only reason that you would ever want to do that. Um, so for the most part, we're going to want to leave this button here on active battery, leisure selected. Okay, so that's essentially what we want to do. The last one is our tank heater. So if you wanted to have the tank heater on in the winter, you can do that just to stop anything freezing up inside there. Okay, so that's the control panel, really easy. Uh, this little thing just here is the temperature sensor or the thermostat for the boiler, which is from this one unit just here, which I will also run you through briefly now. Um, so when we press on this center button here, it will come up with a menu section. So what we've essentially got is we've got four options at the top there, and we just basically select those by hovering over them. So the first one here that's flashing at us now is our uh, heating. All right, so if I press on the heating one there, it comes up saying off, and I'm gonna say it's saying off because it's a bloody hot day. It's nearly 30 degrees outside. Uh, so this probably won't actually work anyway, but basically what you need to do is turn it up to whatever temperature you want it to be at. If I put it at 30, it might just come on. Press there, and you'll then see a little flame symbol come up just above that. So that means our heating is now gonna come on, and any of the little circular vents around the vehicle, so these little beige circular vents here, that's where the heating will come from. So I'm actually gonna turn that off because I really don't want the heating on. <laughs> so next one over is our hot water. So if I press on that one there, you've got the option of 40, 60, or boost. So that is the temperature of the water, or if you're in a real hurry for it, you can slap it on boost. And what it will do is it will get the boiler going really, really hard and fast, and it will get the water nice and hot really quickly. And when I say really quickly, you're probably looking at about 20 minutes to half an hour. So, again, I've had that 40 degrees on there for half an hour or so. I don't really need that on anymore. Uh, the next one over is our energy selector. So whatever you want the boiler to use in order to do whatever you've already told it to do, whether it's heating or hot water, you can select that from here. So you've got gas, mix one and mix two, and electric one and electric two. So at the moment, the only energy that I can use on that boiler is gas only. And the reason for that is I haven't got the hookup plugged in. So when it says mix one or mix two, it means gas and a mixture of electric one or electric two. So if we're hooked up on the mains, we can use the boiler on a mixture of gas and electric, or we can use it on just the electric one or two function. Obviously bear in mind that even if you are hooked up on the mains, you can still just use the boiler on gas if you want to. Um, so that's essentially the idea behind that. So you select what energy you want the boiler to use. So as I say, at the moment we can only use gas, so I just click gas, and then you would tell it what you want the boiler to do. 
So we've got hot water at 60, heating just there. So the last one over on the right hand side, the one that looks like a little fan, if I press on that and the heating isn't on, it will only allow us to well basically it won't allow you to do anything sometimes they allow you to use it as a vent so that they'll allow you to basically just use the the fan just to blow cool air around but i think because i've had the uh heating on just for a few seconds it's not going to let us do that for a minute um but basically when we have the heating on if i just pop it on for a sec put the heating on we can then choose our fan speed whether it's eco or high so essentially Press eco if you're not in much of a hurry for the heating. Put high on if you are. So that'll pump some really nice warm air through those vents just there. Okay, so put that back on eco, turn the boiler off. And basically, as long as you've got nothing there above that black line, if there's nothing along this black line just here, the boiler is off. This screen will turn itself off as well, but you can just press the backspace button there if you want to hurry that up. So that is your boiler control, really, really simple. I'll just make sure there's nothing in these cupboards. This is your paperwork inside this brown folder, just so you know. Right, so I'll show you those bits up there. So behind us then, we've got the kitchen area. So we've got the, uh, the sink and the uh, tap just here. Obviously, if you wanna use the water, you do have to put your pump switch on. Once we've done that, we can just literally start drawing the water through. So we'll just see if we've got hot water yet. Yes, we do, very, very hot. I know you obviously can't see that it's hot, <laughs> but I promise you it is. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, half an hour or so that was on for, so it's not very long at all really. Um, and that is how you would use that. The cooker, um, you've got the option, because this is a British built vehicle, they tend to kind of cater for the cooking a bit more than sort of German vehicles do. Um, so you've got the option here of the mains ring. So if you're hooked up on the mains, you can use that hot ring there by adjusting this switch down here. You've then got the burners up on the top here. So you've got bottom left, bottom right, top right. And we've then got grill and oven. So to light any one of these up, you've got an ignition switch just here, and you would basically push in and round on whichever one you want to do, whilst pressing on the ignition switch. And you can see there, easy as that. Now, the only thing I will point out is, well, two things. Um, when you're using the grill, make sure that you pull this little cover thing out here. Uh, because what it does is it saves these little knobs from getting corroded and uh, melting away because they get too hot. And to leave the grill door open when you're using it. So the only other appliance that I need to show you through, I mean, this the microwave is self-explanatory. You've got a switch just here to turn it on and off. And when you're hooked up on the mains, it's just like a household microwave, to be honest. It's, uh, it would have been the original one that was fitted with the van, to be fair, but uh, it's just a Daewoo uh, microwave, nice and easy. You've got your TV that comes out from just inside this little cupboard here, and your full-size standalone table is inside this really, really neat little sort of slide-out cupboard there as well. So the last thing I need to show you through is going to be the fridge. Now, this is a Dometic AES fridge, okay? So what that means, AES stands for Automatic Energy Selector. So basically you've got the option here, you've got this little A button, and when the A button is illuminated like that, what it means is that the fridge is gonna automatically choose one of these three energies for you. So the three energies are mains electric, gas, or 12 volt. So the 12 volt will only work when your engine's running and you're driving. And all it really does is it holds the temperature inside the fridge for you for when you drive. It doesn't really get the fridge cold by itself, so you will need to pre-cool it before you leave. 
the other two here, the gas and the mains, will get the fridge cold by themselves. They will still take a good few hours to actually get cold. Uh, I mean, I've had this on for half an hour as well, and it's not cold yet, to be fair. You know, it's getting cold. I can feel that it's cold in this corner, but they do take a little while. If you think that, you know, if you've got a new fridge at home and you plugged it into the mains, it's not going to be cold within an hour. It will still be, you know, three, four hours before it's completely cold. So if you're going to go away on holiday tomorrow morning, uh, I like to use it as an example, I would hook the, vans, hook the van up on the mains if you can, and then select the mains. If you can't do that, just select the gas and allow it to cool, cool down overnight and switch over to 12 volt just for when you're driving. As I said, you should be able to leave it on automatic and it should just do this for you. Um, but there you go. You then got, if you have a fault code come up, so for example, if it looked like this, you chose the wrong one, it comes up with a fault code there telling you something's wrong. And if you wanted to change the temperature inside the fridge, you can do it just like that. It's now flashing at us without a little red light telling us that the fridge door has been opened too long. Okay. So that's how you use the fridge. It's really nice and simple. Once you've got the head, you know, got your head around it, it's, it's nice and easy. But there you go. So, um, I think I have run through everything. Um, if there is anything else you want me to run through or anything you think I've missed out, just give us a shout. Um, but otherwise, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks very much.